and an army of gods battle and tie up Apophis, the serpent demon. Brissetti knows from his guide that Apophis will be back. In the same hour, the Pharaoh meets the four races of man, Nubians, Egyptians, Asiatics, and Libyans. Their presence shows that the Egyptian afterlife was open to anyone. It was a universal reality. As he approaches the darkest hour, Seti is about to come face to face with the most important god of the underworld, Osiris. For Egyptians, Osiris is central because he sits in judgment over all the dead. In life, Egyptians believed Osiris was the first pharaoh that he was murdered and thrown into the Nile by his jealous brother. Resurrected by his wife Isis, his green skin symbolizes his divine power to create new life. Archaeologist Gunter Dreyer knows that Egyptians revered Osiris as their first king. But he thinks they went much further than that here, at the tomb of the pharaoh Cher, creating a cult of Osiris and worshipping him as the first resurrected pharaoh god. Dreyer knows that a thousand years after Cher's reign, Egyptians tried to find the tomb of Osiris. And since Cher's tomb is one of the oldest known even to the ancient Egyptians, this seemed to be the most likely place. This place was once the holiest site of all Egypt and it became a center of pilgrimage for centuries. Each Egyptian wanted to come here to make his offering to Osiris and ask him for a good afterlife. There are offerings found from kings of the New Kingdom like Tutankhamun. And all around here you see millions of potsherds from offering vessels left here by pilgrims. And one could, I think, compare this site to modern Mecca. Like the birthplace of Islam, or Calvary, the site where Jesus died, the sanctity of the site is a measure of the devotion paid to that God. Said he recognized that power. Just before hour six on his afterlife journey, when he arrived at the Judgment Hall of Osiris, 